Imagine a world where doctors help you get healthy and not just respond to your sickness. A world where experts empower you to feel good and bring peace, joy, and love to yourself and the world. An integrative approach to health. Dr. Arlene DeHomko is on a mission to wake medicine up and raise the bar of health with her show, The Multidimensional MD. Call 678-495-4345 to talk to her live on air. Or put your comments on Facebook Live at UI Media Network with your questions, concerns, suggestions, or just to say hello. Don't forget to like and share and spread the message as she helps activate the natural healing force within all of us. Let's join Dr. Arlene DeHomko in bringing spirit back to medicine on the Multidimensional MD. Hi, thank you for joining me for episode nine of the Multidimensional MD. I'm your host, Dr. Arlene Dianco, and I'm an integrative physician, pediatrician, and cranial and osteopath, and here to help wake up medicine. During this time with the pandemic and racism and wanting to shift the world, there's so much heaviness, so much intensity of emotions and energies. And I know this is leaving a lot of people feeling in a perpetual fight or flight, just feeling that stress and anxiety. Um, and so today we're going to talk about ways that you can um, help rebalance your energy uh, with meditative exercises. This is with my friend and colleague, Dr. Chris Lassiter. He's an osteopathic physician who's bridging the gap between hands-on healing medicine, rehabilitation, acupuncture, and Chinese yoga known as Qigong. He's had over 30 years in studies of osteopathic medicine and Chinese internal arts, and he's blended these arts into a practice that he calls meditative exercises. So Dr. Lassiter, thank you so much for being here with me today. Oh, thank you so much, Arlene. Of course, uh, call me Chris when you're Okay, thank you, Chris. Um, I'll get, I'll get nervous. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, you know, what what do you feel that the relevance of meditative exercises is today? Well, we're all undergoing a great deal of stress and seeing some difficult things, first with the pandemic and then with all of these uh, these problems with race and so on. But I think it's a potential for great change too. So these are exciting times. But uh, the real problem is people don't really have a chance to reset themselves. Mm -hmm. And they just get you know, more and more stress on and on until they might have some kind of uh, health issue come up or breakdown. Yeah. And so what I'm teaching is a way to learn to let it be and to disengage, which is a whole art in itself. And I feel and, like in doing that, like in in, in um, kind of getting to know yourself and getting to know your your true self, your authenticity, it will help people be a part of this change and this shift in the world and wanting to bring more goodness and love and harmony, acceptance, letting everyone have room on the table. Yes. And you cannot be your best self and accomplish what you want to in the world. If you're constantly stressed out and distracted and operating with a low ebb of energy. Mm -hmm. And so this is what I'm trying to share with people is how I've survived my medical practice and, uh, you know, my stressful events in my life and how to grow from everything and not be, uh, not be overwhelmed. Yes. And I would say you haven't just survived, but you have thrived <laughs> in being able to um, explore these different things. So what, what are meditative exercises? Well, they're sort of a combination of meditations and exercises that uh, my own personal practice and lots of great training I've had, been able to put something together, which included my osteopathic heritage, uh, so that I can help people adjust themselves in the way that they might seek help from their acupuncturist or chiropractor. And in that way, keep themselves in better balance. And Qigong is kind of the word that means Chinese yoga is an easy okay. translation. And it's a way to adjust yourself, adjust your body, your mind, your breath. That's almost the definition of a medical Qigong. 
that's really neat. So this is a way for people to self-treat and self-heal themselves and on various layers, like mind, body, spirit. And so really integrating that into more of a, a true healing. And moreover, you know, I reset people in their imbalances, try and help them cope and take care of their problems in my office, of course. But this is a way to strengthen yourself, which you really can only do for yourself. Mm -hmm. And so having a personal practice like this, uh, developing an interior life will help everyone to uh, decrease a lot of emotional stress, burdens, and weed out negative thinking, deterministic thinking, as well as uh, have your health improve dramatically. Yeah, like what you said, in developing an interior life, uh, because a lot of times people feel like it, the life is happening to them, the world is happening to them, um, but uh, you're focusing on developing that inner world. That's right. I think we're really lacking that in the West. And what I always appreciated about my Eastern studies was that they always had this tremendous legacy of uh, looking within and charting the interior of the mind in a way that we just haven't done in the West. We sort of conquered the external world with our technology, but look at all the shortcomings that has come with from environmental degradation to not being able to get along with each other or even be comfortable with ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is bridging all of that together. Now you have an interesting background. Um, can you tell us more about how you got interested in meditative exercise and how you developed this um, kind of paradigm of healing? Oh, sure. You know, when I was in medical school, I had a, a classmate who had done Tai Chi for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I had done karate and things back in the Bruce Lee days when I was a boy, you know, and everybody was doing that. But uh, I'd kind of given that up. And, you know, I was I was doing uh, Olympic style weightlifting for a time and had a career in that. Wow. I had some some minor achievements there. I was able to to get some uh, national recognition and some I, I never knew that until we started talking about th this show. So that's really cool. Yeah, it's interesting because it just helped me so much as a young man to stay on the right path. I was able to train with Bruce Jenner and Al Order, gold medal shot putter, uh, national caliber weightlifting champions, because we had a great team uh, in San Francisco. And so wow. then that kind of helped shepherd me along, but I got hurt very badly. A uh, number of areas of my body just didn't want to work anymore. Mm -hmm. And I had chronic disabilities with back pain and so on. I couldn't walk for a week at a time when I started college. And actually I joined the Air Force. I was going to lift for their team and they had an Olympic caliber lifter. I was going to work with him. And instead I wound up discharged from the Air Force, the medical discharge and coming out with a cane and a haircut like this back in the uh, uh, late seventies. So <laughs> I guess it was 1980. It wasn't too fashionable. <laughs> And so, you know, then, yeah, I couldn't even, I couldn't even uh, study right. I had to lay down half the time, stand in the back of the classroom. It was really, so when I got to medical school, my friend tried to teach me Tai Chi and I could only use very limited movement. He said, your form breaks down when you try and move more. You should, you have to move in a very small way because of your body's tightness and limitations. So I wasn't very enthusiastic and we parted ways in medical school and then, uh, I found this book called The Way of Energy by a master, Lam Kan Chun, and he had developed this uh, art kind of like Tai Chi in Great Britain. And uh, I became a, almost like a part of a small family of people that promulgated this standing meditation. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to move. You could just stand and you develop tremendous energy, strength and health just in holding mild postures, not like yoga. You had to be able to hold them for a while. And this rehabilitated me. And, uh, you know, I was able to gain so much. I did it for 15 years, mostly on my own. And then I wound up investing a lot of energy into it. I had a little midlife crisis. I tried to lift weights again, and that didn't go well. So I said, you know, inflection point, let's just go over here and do the Tai Chi. So I invested, you know, many thousands of dollars into learning and training with uh, some people that really knew about energy work and Chi. They used it in martial arts, they used it in healing. Uh -huh meditation traditions. Yeah. And really it all came together in what I call this meditative exercise. That's so great. I, the, the inner time between like the martial arts. So I think that, you know, a lot of people don't realize that martial arts 
has a lot to do with like internal energy movement and um, that stillness and being able to access um, that potential. And it can be incredible for healing as well. Uh, so, so Tai Chi is like this, it's like that slow moving, but it's all still a martial arts. And, um, you know, some people call it like an internal martial arts, um, but you get it. We get to see like how powerful it is. And I know we started talking about something like you said you would um, practice for over a decade of using your energy to bounce people off walls. This is just a, a practice that's done. Um, and I just thought that was really fascinating. We actually have a clip of that just so people can get the idea of how powerful um, these standing meditation can be, the Qigong, Tai Chi, and, and blending it. Um, and what's interesting with this video is that um, the guy that you're bouncing, your student, he said he felt really good. And so that's really neat. But um, Suji, can we go ahead and play that video? Because the mind leads the chi. So then we do it softly. And you see, you start to fill up with energy. My main form of treatment is that I get treated this way. Yeah. So. And the softer we do it, you see, it just starts to, I can calm the nervous system down. Okay. And that one, I kind of feel good down or instead of backwards. Ah, okay. Down is like sinking the chi. I always sink the chi and then go back. But then practice with you sometimes because, you know, you're studying the martial arts and things. You do each one. It's like, oh, this is off. Right, you know, right away. From the standing meditation, it's like this. You grab my arm here. And this, this is like, oh, he feels like he goes back as soon as he touches me. Can you see that? Without me doing anything. From the side, it's the same. From the shoulder. From no, the I still feel some of my like, like pulling like this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even from my head. <laughs> so it didn't matter, like, what what side of you that he was touching. I mean, and you hardly moved sometimes, and he would go flying. You you almost got a feeling that he was making it up, but, it. I mean, he's really actually getting... Thrown, but he said that his energy was getting down, like grounded. Yeah, I play with the center of gravity. The people, their balance is how we do it. So he was uh, considerably younger and larger than me, but it took no effort and I be don't become winded because I'm not really using my body and strength so much. It's uh, primarily from the mind and using the energy. And yeah, it's a bit cooperative because I think in real life, if you, I've never tried to apply you know, such a thing, but I think people do just kind of fall down. They absorb the energy, they could get hurt. Mm -hmm. So we have a padded wall so they, they can uh, let the energy move them in a safe way they can, they can move backward. When they do it without a wall, they stamp on the ground to discharge the energy as they go backward. Yeah. And, and I'm used to like seeing, I've seen videos like that, like as a martial art, but then he said at the end, he was like this, oh, I feel good. And I, I was wondering, I was like, wait, what happened? Why does he feel good? What's going on? Like, what, are you, is energy being transferred? Is it, how is it moving? What, what would you say? Well, there is some energy transfer. And uh, also uh, that energy is he's learning because usually they want to learn to do this. They're studying martial arts. Uh, we were all studying Tai Chi as we were learning this, mostly middle-aged people, somewhat older people, uh, all very nice people. You know, with a few hard-edged people that were actually fighters in different traditions or military people. And we work with this uh, elderly Chinese man in Vancouver named Sam Tam. And he was a tremendous uh, martial artist, just ferocious. And uh, so he's in his late 70s and he could, he could mop the floor with anybody that he was teaching. And uh, it was just a lot of fun to, to be in his presence. He's kind of a Renaissance man because he could understand how to heal people using his tremendous energy, as well as uh, use it as a martial arts maneuver. So he was so good as a healer, I just thought I have to stay with him. He was just about as good as any osteopathic physician I'd ever worked with. And he didn't have formal training. He was the son of a doctor in Chiang Kai-shek's army, the nationalists that lost to the communists in the mainland China after World War II. So he grew up in in the mainland saw atrocities as a boy and then they moved to Taiwan, then they moved to Hong Kong 
and he trained with the elite in the martial arts, you know, everywhere yeah. he went. That, that's so powerful. We are going to talk more about this and we're going to talk about mudras and Dr. Chris Laster is going to show us about that. So if you're just joining us, you're watching The Multidimensional MD. I'm Dr. Arlene Diampo, your host. I would just say hi to our friends at WDJY 99.1 FM in Atlanta and friends at WTTA 101.2 FM in Kentucky and Ohio. You can now wish it Watch and listen to all exclusive content at 24-7 at uimedia.app. So we will be right back with Mudras. Hi, I'm Greta Fole, president of Golden Home Services, a premier private home care service for seniors in Georgia for almost two decades now. We all have parents, and I know I love my parents more than anything else in this world. And because of that, Golden Home Services make sure we care for your parents as if they were our parents. Call 678-242-0084 anytime or visit goldenhomeservices.com to select from our range of affordable home care services. How exciting. This yeah. is great. Welcome back to the Multidimensional MD. I'm your host, Dr. Arlene Diamco, here to Wake Up Medicine. So thank you for joining us. I'm here with my guest, Dr. Chris Lassiter. He is a doctor of osteopathic medicine, an acupuncturist, and also an internal martial arts expert. He's developed a system called meditative exercises. And part of that is using mudras. So I thought this was really interesting. So Chris, can you tell us what, what are mudras? Oh, I'd be very happy to, but let's not call me a martial arts expert because that okay. might encourage the wrong kind of uh, <laughs> business. <laughs> yeah. Inter so. Internal healing, healing arts. Yes. I learned a lot of this through the martial arts, including this first mudra I'll show you. A mudra means hand gesture. If you look in the dictionary and you can see it in statues and so on in Asia, they, they have uh, different representations in art, like they're using their hands. And a more accurate de depiction of this is that you use the hand to unlock the wisdom of the body. And so the wisdom that's inherently within your body and reflects the macrocosm of the universe around you as well, you can access that through meditation and using the smallest exercise that, I, that we can imagine, which is a hand gesture. Yeah. Okay, so these have important meanings. Let's start with this one. You touch the tip of your middle finger Okay. With your thumbnail and you press in and what do you feel? Well, there's a lot of things to feel besides pressure on your fingertip. You probably feel, if I point it out to you, as if someone's putting a pencil, the eraser into your chest. Can you feel that? You touch here, you feel okay. that in I your feel chest. something going down my back too. Okay. So yes, all of this is interacted with your whole body. You can't move any part of your body as you know doing cranial osteopathy without the web of fascia interacting as a whole, it's like a spider web. So when you touch a spider web, there's force transmission in all directions and everywhere at once. So we use our hands and that way uh, we have something we can use, it, it's no problem. This will help you calm down quite a bit. Do you feel something in the center of your chest if you push here? Just mm -hmm. a little something. Yeah, and is that is this working on the meridians, the um, like what, what exact, is this the fascia, the tendons? How would you explain it? Well, it's all these things. The body really doesn't have any systems or names. Uh, remember Roland Becker, one of our uh, people in our heritage, our lineage, uh, you know, the body has no names. It's simply the body and we have to divide it up so we can learn about it, like in medical school. So meridians are a great way to explain this. When you touch here, the middle fingertip is the pericardium meridian. It comes along here and it's it's in the median of your arm, just like the median nerve. Uh -huh. It travels to your armpit and then to your chest and it goes into your chest and surrounds the heart like the pericardium. Pericardium means around the heart. Oh, so, and that's very important right now, just with yeah, what everyone's feeling. Absolutely, the pericardium is something that gets tight under stress too. Like a life-threatening stress, mm -hmm. your body will protect your heart and that's one of the mechanisms. Everybody needs to calm down. And this is the first thing they should do. So how would you, how do you say to hold it? Like how long would you do that? What, you know, if we're, well, what? The first thing is we touch here 
and we feel something and then, okay, what do we focus on? Actually, what I like to teach is that a space should develop in your mind between your thumb and middle fingertip. And if you feel a sponge or something like a Nerf ball, that means that the muscles are changing your deep flexor muscles in your hand, in your in forearm. That means that something's, that's the change I'm looking for. Hmm. But if I show people this, there's no mudra, right? So we have to start with this. Okay. So you I don't even to have to up. touch. Like, yeah. would you would you be moving it and it would be like this, like a moving mudra? Or no, let, me, let me show you how I teach you. So then you I've... put your hands up. Now the left one doesn't want to disengage. The right one can open a little bit. I'll be your mirror. Okay. This one doesn't want to as much. Uh -huh. For so me, you're, you're talking yes, to like, you. yeah, for me. I can see because I have this kind of inner yeah. vision. <laughs> That's what the yeah, you've got a lot more going on. <laughs> That's one of the byproducts of the training. Now, when you put your hand behind you and go back, it's like you're going back in time. Like this becomes your arm bud embryologically. So when your arm is forming, it forms like this. And then you feel you can open it very easily. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. You bring it back slowly. Keep that space. Now it doesn't feel so tight. Yeah. You adjusted something. Yeah, something happened. Yeah. So then the next one I like to talk about is. Uh, so this one you would say for calming. This is yeah, this calming. one is good for calming down. Okay. Which I, you can do first, no matter what else you're doing. Let's say you want to exercise, your body's not really prepared. You're all tense. Mm -hmm. You do this first. Your body will start to perform better. Because your pericardium goes with a certain vertebrae wow. in your back. That's awesome. That's anybody. Like, so for sports, for speaking, for before meetings, before you have to yeah. do projects. I mean, Whenever you, you don't want to be afraid. Before you're having a difficult conversation, which we're having a lot of those right now. Yes. It'd be really neat. There should be breaks where everybody goes like this, you know, <laughs> just like now. The next one then, how can you calm your mind, right? If you say meditate, that means stop thinking. That's one form of meditation. It's an advanced form. Very difficult, actually. It's just sort of the gaps in your thoughts become longer and longer. And, you know, you can cultivate such a thing, but they never completely go away. And that's okay, too. That's normal. Mm -hmm. But if you want to stop your brain immediately, and I mean the motion of your brain, like we work with in cranial osteopathy, yeah. and also your thought, do the mudra like this touching the index finger, the side of it, the side of the fingernail, okay? I'm getting a bad sun there, aren't I? Like when I come in here with a soft part of my thumb and I touch it to the fingernail, the side of the fingernail there, perfect. Now, what happens when you do that? Your brain stops moving. Hmm. And you, you sense calmness because you're not using as much energy, your thoughts stop for a moment. That's why people use this in meditation. It's like a shortcut. I did feel that. It was just like a wave of like, oh, a little more quiet. Yeah. And then some people who are really anxious, this will be stuck. Want to be stuck like this. In other words, so it doesn't want to move. Hand, yeah, it doesn't want to open. That means the muscles in their hand are affected. And if they get that to let go, they can get this to let go. Oh, but yeah. Mine feel a little stuck. A little bit. <laughs> then you put it behind like this. <laughs> Yes. And you feel it open, especially on one side, right? Uh -huh. And then you just give it a moment and stretch your arm out behind you. Use your imagination and go a thousand miles away. It opens right up. Then you bring it back and it's like, oh, I can close it or oh, it's like under my control again. <laughs> I can just open or close. Yeah, and that's really that. incredible. I, yeah. Does it matter how I hold them if I put them out like this or in your lap or like out? Not, not really. You can see that it changes it when you yep. do this. So it matters if you move like forward, it gets tighter. Mm, okay. Yeah. But in general, that's a way to speed up the process. You move it back here, then you bring it back. And then you've kind of accomplished something with that mudra. When you touch here, like we did, mm -hmm. then you feel it under your belly button. An important mm -hmm. acupuncture point helps you bring your energy down out of your head. You know, your energy stuck in your head. Then you have confusion and anxiety, maybe high blood pressure and headaches. So that's just an oriental way of looking at that. The orientals know that, you know, well, this is you touch here for headaches and so on. And that, that relates to this, of course. That's cool. 
That's another mudra. Yeah. I'll give you one more. Okay. This is this one's the last one we do in our class when we're warming up. Like before we start to move, we do this first because the mind come before the body. When you touch your thumb to the fourth finger, the root of your fourth finger, your ring finger, yep, then your thumb will get tired so you can fold your fingers down. Then you just hold that. Then do it on one side only. Okay, which side? Uh, do it on your right side. Yeah. yeah. Now, what does everyone see if they can watch the video podcast? Like smile and then relax. Okay, this is hard to see, <laughs> but I can, uh, she can, uh, she has no trouble smiling. That's the problem. <laughs> a lot of people don't smile. Now, this activates your facial muscles. So, do you feel as if smiling on the right side is easier? In fact, you can't okay. stop smiling on the right side. <laughs> So this, do you feel that? Like it's activated your facial muscles a, a little bit. That's crazy. Yeah. And it's affecting your brain. I mean, it's helping the chemistry of your brain. And basically I, I call this like the gregariousness uh -huh. mudra. Like you're not fit to be with other people until you do it. Uh-huh. Otherwise you might make a mistake or blow it in some way because your mind is, you know, you're not ready to engage. So we had the, the calm. Okay, so we, I want to review this. The calm with the middle finger and the thing, uh, thumb nail to the middle finger. Yep. Right? Calm down. You calm. feel it here. That helps you calm, pericardium. And then we did, um, let's see, the That's inner right. finger, the thumb. In yes. And this it's helped instant to. Instant meditation. Instant meditation. Now calm the thoughts. I calm the body, calm the thoughts. You feel and it. Then uh, let's yeah, be happy. Yeah. Why just one yeah. side? Why did you say just one side to demonstrate to you? Okay. That it changes something. Normally we do it on both sides, but once you've done it once on one side, you realize, oh, what's going so, on? I feel, I feel so that would be a neat, that's a neat fist to make. <laughs> yes. Yeah. People should just, uh, if the whole world did this every day, it would be a better world, I think. How well, long would you say, like, how long? Okay, so if I were to start incorporate the mudras into my meditative practice, how long would you do that for? Uh, well, when you feel as if there's a space there, you don't need to do that one. Okay. And when you feel like it's closed and tight, you want to change that. So it's diagnostic, sort of. And you do it when you need to do it. But the goal of practicing a meditative exercise would be that you'd improve and this would not close down like that. That's neat. And you also incorporate like breath work with the mudras. And, and um, I know we're kind of like building here. <laughs> but you kind of, do you start with the mudras? Like how do you start teaching? The mudra is a great way to start because people do not want to exercise in general. Only some people do, right? Mm -hmm. And exercise as we know it, actually only some people benefit and some people, it doesn't seem to make a difference in their health based on the science. And yet we all actually would benefit by refining our bodies, mind and connection with our body, moving to some degree. Uh, you know, some people can get along with much less. Some people are addicted to exercise. Mm -hmm. This is a nice way to start because most of us are rather sit on the couch and do something else. So, so if yeah. someone doesn't want to, if someone's not a mover, like they just don't really like physical yes. exercise yet, then they can start with little hand meditative um, mudras. And that can, that's a great segue into meditation um, because it can be hard to just, just all of a sudden, like you said, meditate. You've never meditated before. You've never been quiet. Um, like how to, to calm those thoughts. Uh, this is a, this is a really useful way to make it more accessible to people. Yeah, that's my goal is to make this kind of thing available because I'm a doctor and I want to help people. And yet I see the great potential of these things having been involved many years myself and the barriers are, are really replete. There's a lot of things between us and developing this interior life mm -hmm. or us and developing uh, integral strength, which the video demonstrated. Yes, yeah, so this is a way to develop into to cultivate that inner life that 
your spirit, which it seems, it seems so simple, but that's the point is that we can start and it can be simple. It can be easy, but it can have like so much profound effect. Um, so we're going to take another short break. You're watching The Multidimensional MD with Dr. Arlene Diamkum, your host, here with our guest, Dr. Chris Lassiter, talking about meditative exercises. We'll be right back and to talk more about starting with spirit and the, uh, the meditative exercises. Uh, if you have any questions or would like to say hello, you can call us at 678-495-4345. And connect with us online. You can follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Spreaker, and other podcasting platforms at UI Media Network. We'll be right back. See you shortly. This is Kurt Arsenault of Arsenault Advisory Group. Do you make a six-figure income but live paycheck to paycheck? You're not alone. Many six-figure income households will buy too much home and too much car creating tremendous financial stress that builds debt when you should be building wealth. If you make six figures and live paycheck to paycheck, visit arsenaladvisory.com and download our free ebook titled, I Make Six Figures and Live Paycheck to Paycheck. You have nothing to lose and potentially everything to gain. Visit arsenaladvisory.com today. Welcome back to The Multidimensional MD. I'm your host, Dr. Arlene Dianco, here to help wake up medicine. So thank you so much for being here. I'm talking to my guest, Dr. Chris Lassiter, who is an osteopathic physician and acupuncturist and an internal arts, <laughs> healing arts <laughs> expert. So he has developed something called meditative exercises. And last segment, we talked about mudras. And we're gonna talk about now starting with spirit and what that means um, in terms of the meditative exercises. So can you tell us more about that, Chris? Absolutely. So when I say spirit, you know, I'm a kind of a fairly concrete person. I like abstraction, but what does it mean? I struggled for years with my research and reading into Taoism and so on. Uh, they call it Shan, spelled S-H-E-N, the spirit. And uh, then I read a wonderful author named Nan Lu, who is very prominent in reviving Buddhism in China. And uh, he, he sort of likened uh, spirit to light. And it's part of the three treasures in Chinese medicine and Taoism. So spirit is one. And then there's Jing, which is kind of like your potential energy. It's kind of like, you know, again, a hard word to translate. Well, he calls it heat. So now we know what to do. I mean, we can figure something out to help someone. Uh, so spirit is light, and we're going to use it in that context. Jing is is uh, is heat, and qi, which no one can get a good definition, becomes force. And force is what you could think of as movement or what creates the adjustment in your body. The way that we work, especially, Arlene, with our cranial work, we don't use force, and the body adjusts itself. Mm -hmm. And so chi is manifesting in a way that's making those adjustments, although it's not part of our model. Okay. So, okay. So yeah. then one of the three treasures, everything's three in Chinese. Three is the, the creation number in Chinese numerology. San means three. Uh, so for uh, the three treasures of man, it's spirit or heat, jing, I'm sorry, spor spirit or light, Jing, which is heat, and Qi, which is force. Now, when you try and start with force, you think of exercise. This just kind of beats you up. It's a kind of abuse, most exercise. Yeah. And let me ask you, because I know a lot, so a lot of people say Qi is energy. Is like, what What do you think of that? Is it just uh, semantics? Like Qi is, it manifests in different ways. So that's why there's no one good definition. Okay. So I think force is great because it accomplishes something. It does work. Mm -hmm. Energy does work. Mm -hmm. You know, you can measure it and you can, you have an equation for such a thing. Uh, it acts like, like uh, hydrodynamics, plumbing, chi does. Mm -hmm. It acts like electricity. So how do you get a handle on all these things? It has dynamics like uh, mechanics, like the meridian is tight. Uh, and so these are things that all have to be come, come together. And I like what he says, using force as the term. 
So when you try and start with chi, though, very confusing mm -hmm. because people can't feel it. I was teaching in England uh, last year, and uh, you know it was a kind of a problem because I was teaching osteopathic uh, practitioners, and they just uh, I was trying to teach them to feel the chi, but they had no background for that and how it interacted with adjustment and anatomy. Mm -hmm. and, and so then that that made it kind of difficult to bridge that gap. So how can we get started in such a thing? A lot of people have talked about light in the body. Mystics from all corners of the earth for forever have talked about seeing inside and light filling the body. And it's portrayed around the body in medieval paintings of Jesus mm -hmm. and so on, like an aura. So this is all chi. Yeah, a halo, an aura, or an aura. A halo, right. Yeah. So, but when I want to use this as a way to help people, I can give a very concrete way. So we, we might use a mudra. Let's take a mudra for uh, the spleen and stomach, which is the earth element in Chinese medicine. Spleen and stomach. Okay? Okay. You do acupuncture for that. Give verbs. There's exercise as well. Now, the finger would be the thumb for the earth element. Okay. We're gonna practice then the Jindi Mudra. Jindi, Jin is heart and mind, and that's something in the chest to the Chinese. We think of our mind and heart as separate. We need two words, they only have one. And to them it's here, not here. Oh, wow, that's fascinating. It is. So you have to start with Jin, heart, mind, Mudra, and it relates to the earth, okay? so the. The thumb meridian, or the thumb, uh, the thumb is the finger goes with that. Imagine turning it into a flashlight, and you shine the flashlight from the tip of your thumb. Okay, I'm looking at yours, and your left one just doesn't, it's like the battery's low. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't go. When you put your hand down, like this, palm down, this is, this is Jindi, or heart mind mudra. Okay. Jindi, yen, yen. Mudra is an Indian word, but we've adopted that like we talk about yoga. Uh, Qigong is a Chinese word, and yen is, means mudra in Chinese. So jin di ren, jin di yen, means uh, uh, this mudra of the earth. You shine the flashlight. Now, this is both in the body, okay? In the body is like the meridians in the body, and it affects blood flow to the spleen. It affects blood flow to the stomach. It affects the spine behind those areas, T11 and 12. This is all in Chinese medicine. And it affects the jaws and the mouth and the head. Where am I shining my flashlights? Well, wherever your thumb points. Okay. So they're shining at each other a little bit. The right one's so much better. And you feel your left one can't straighten out as well. Mm. Your thumb okay. is a little bit like the left one, the right one's straight, so much straighter. And you try and move it like that way, it moves so easily. This one's like, nah, it doesn't really doesn't move as well. So you're extending your mind through your thumb. And by starting with spirit, meaning light, then I can see this trail off into the distance. The farther it goes, the more free it all feels in my thumb, my arm, and then my back and my pancreas, my jaw. The parts of the mind that deal with this, which is kind of like weeding a garden. You want to weed out. It's a good one to start with. You want to weed your your mind of bad thoughts before you begin cultivating something else. So first you go to the garden, you get the weeding out. So out just doing this, this is a mudra. Yes. And shining my thumb lights as far as they can go will help to. Yes. Then let's say you need to make so it. Using that heart mind to imagine that light. Yeah. Okay. The part inside your body is first because your mind is stuck in your body because you have some kind of problem. It's a mild problem. It's just your stomach isn't that great right now in a small way, but it detains your mind. Part of your attention is there, not free to be used elsewhere. And your body reflects that. So you can't move. Mm. Now I'll stand up back here and I'll show I, you then yeah. the, the mudra in action because you can put it into action and make an adjustment of your body. Okay. Okay. That would be great. Okay. So I do the Jin Di Yen. And I put my hand in front of my stomach, palm down. And I'm imagining my fingertips, all 10 of them shining out. And the thumb especially reflects the spleen and stomach. 
And I feel as if I can't move forward. Like if I put one foot forward, it looks more like martial arts, right? Mm -hmm. That was something like this. But actually I'm working on my body and I'm just focused on the right side more. And then as it gets better, I feel my body weight shift all by itself. I can come out like this and push back. And I've adjusted something in my back and I've helped my stomach. I might have helped my jaw. But what's going on besides in your body, you can use your mind, connect to what's outside your body. And what you want to do here is connect with the earth. And the earth is so great. Such, such connection or courting with the earth It's to become more in tune with the earth. It means compassion, greatness, a big heart that can burden, you know, any, take any kind of burden. The earth nurtures everything without reward. It just manifests everything in the world, right? So this is Zhen Di Yen, or the mudra for earth element. Okay, so this, this helps us connect with the earth. And like you said, oh, have that yeah. big heart that can take in anything. Now, if exactly. you know this, a lot of this is very subtle looking. And I know that, you know, we're both osteopaths. But what if you, is, do you find that people can feel the shifts easily or does it take time to learn to feel well it takes time and actually uh it it's just a matter of someone connecting to you in a way that you can make that make that association some people are very dense in their sensorium they're not connected to their body others are better at it uh what i found was my my to help myself just turning your hand over from the palm up to the palm down close to your body if you pull it in a little bit, your body move, your body go forward. This is where the action is, a very small movement. Mm -hmm. When you go way out, that's great for your shoulder. It's not adjusting your spine. So this, lo this looks like something that's very helpful to have someone kind of help fine tune for you. Like you le will learn it much faster if you yes. do, do it with someone. And, you know, for the patients, they can work on their weak spots and they turn their weaknesses into strengths. That, and so these are these are kinds of homework that you give patients yes. to help themselves. Some of the young men, I'll even take them to the bouncing wall <laughs> behind us here. And I could do this movement and move this much and throw them on the wall. The point being that it's fixing them just like our treatment. It's like, I. it's so fascinating to me that something that looks like that is is a healing Yes. Experience. Now, before I don't want to run out of time, so I want to you you showed us the earth mudra okay. and meditative exercise. Um, and then you also mentioned the heaven. The heaven. We got the heaven below, the earth above. Man is between heaven and earth. Is the there heaven world. above, earth below. So we're in between. Yes. Yeah. That's the Chinese model of the universe. Man is in the center. Mm -hmm. Now, so the, the heaven exercise is the liver. So both of them are at the same level here, but the palm is up. Now, when you put your palm up this way, first of all, you feel like an upward force in your body. And what you want to try and do is imagine the celestial bodies, their motion, the sun, moon, and stars actually comprise heaven, another trinity. Everything's three. So to do the heaven mudra, heaven earth mudra, we come back like this and we turn our palm from down to up. This turning is where the action is. My hand is here and my hand is here. This turning of the hand in the sleeve, they liken to having the universe in your hand and you, you controlling yourself this way in relation to, to everything. Now, when you can turn this way and your hand become loose this way, your body become loose this way, that means that you're uh, able to change between yin and yang effortlessly. All your transitions in life are smoother. So when you come way out like this then, and you can make a bigger movement, it looks better. But all the action is just little motion, very slow. But I could grab my wrist and, oh, you go to the wall, kind of like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of fun. That's incredible. And I'm so glad we played that video in the beginning because I'm watching your movements and they're so subtle and small and they, they don't look like much, but then to know that if somebody was in front of you, that they could go flying to the wall. 
<laughs> martial arts were a way to demonstrate the effect of the chi. I didn't want to be studying all this for so, putting so much effort and time and money into learning about chi and working with patients without some way to demonstrate and show them. And for some, the martial arts is yeah. a very effective way. It's a great visual. So yeah. we're, gonna, we're gonna take another quick break here. Thank you for watching the Multidimensional MDM, Dr. Arlene Diamco here with Dr. Chris Lasseter. And we are going to continue talking about meditative exercises in the next segment. Are you ready to build the life of your dreams? Join master coach and author Jessica Joins, host of Soul Purpose, to get your most important soul purpose questions answered. Simply write to her at contact at uimedianetwork.org to tell her what you're struggling with, and you might get a chance to be featured on Jessica's show live. We'll see you in just a moment. At Heiser Orthodontics, we understand that your smile is a big deal for both kids and adults. We have the latest technology and state-of-the-art equipment. But honestly, what makes us unique is our patient experience. And we are not the only people saying this. Heiser Orthodontics is amazing. Superb. Trustworthy. Compassionate. A friendly place where they know what they're doing, and that's what I like about it. We are a family-owned private practice where kids are valued, parents have a voice, and the entire Heiser team puts the patient first. Discover the Heiser orthodontics difference. Call 470-330-9083 for a free consultation today. Welcome back. You are watching the Multidimensional MD. He and I'm your host, Dr. Arlene Diamco, and we are all here to help wake up medicine. I'm talking to my guest, Dr. Chris Lasseter. He's an osteopath, an acupuncturist, an internal healing arts expert, and we're talking about his meditative exercises. These are pretty subtle exercises combining meditation, movement, stillness, mudras and um there you know chris I, I wanted to ask you because they're so subtle what kinds of sensations do people notice when they start learning these things oh that's entirely individual because it depends on the blockages they're dealing with so you know the most of the time uh you know we, we deal with like I, I treat a lot of amish people where i live and, and you're in lancaster Yes, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. They don't feel anything typically when I treat them, but they get the results and come back. Other cultures have a tendency to be able to feel much more in their body. So it's somewhat cultural. And what people feel, you know, is the unblocking of some channel. So then that creates some sensation or some symptom. It can, it can create temporarily pain or something, but it could produce sensations of, uh, they, they suddenly think they're enlightened or something, <laughs> or now I've got it, you know, <laughs> and that's just characteristic of the first 10 years of any meditation program until you finally kind of get over your body's unblocked enough and everything returns to normal. But the normal is a supra normal. Uh -huh. It's the true normal. In other words, you can appreciate everything around you instead of being stuck inside. Yeah. So you don't have to, be able to notice all of the sensations to benefit from it. No, uh, it's just like I, I use this to treat people. I'll stand them up and I'll move their hand like that. Mm -hmm. And so it's not different than the actual treatment, whether it's a manipulation or uh, done as a posture holding kind of yoga. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all the same. And it unblocking the channel is the primary purpose. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, I've really changed the way I practice medicine to be focused on unblocking people's channels and balancing their energy, their chi. And, uh, you know, trying to, some people are de deficient in chi, uh -huh. you'd have chronic fatigue syndrome or something. But for many functional problems, this is a great answer. And you've been teaching classes even outside your medical practice um, so people could learn meditative exercises. Can you tell us just about what people, different students' experiences with those classes? Well, uh, I had a, a man that, uh, I had treated him and he is, he, he, he had chronic fatigue and we treated him in the office, got a good start, but it was really expensive for him. So I just took him to the class 
and we worked it out that way. Then he had a recurrence of his thyroid cancer a year or two later. I hadn't seen him for a long time, and I could see something was really wrong with him. And I said, "You must come back and work with me. As you know, I want to help you." In addition to pursuing uh, care for your thyroid cancer, and so he was able to sail through that and get through a surgery, and uh, you know, rec- you know, a recurrence of his yeah. cancer didn't didn't undermine his health. A lot of times, people have cancer. They never recover fully. And so Mm -hmm. in this way, we can help people like that and give them something they can do for themselves. And I think that's very important. See, people need to reinforce what we're doing for them using cranial osteopathy. They also need to uh, just have something to work on and help themselves rather than, uh, you know, they come to an office half an hour a month Mm -hmm. and the rest of the time it's, you know, kind of, degrading their health. Yeah, their no, I, I love self-help and I love, um, I love classes because to me, it's like, um, I, instead of giving, you know, if you're, you're a fisherman, like instead of like catching the fish for them, it's like teaching them how to do it for themselves, which is very empowering and can heal, um, at an even deeper level because they're, they have to be responsible for their healing as well. Um, and, you, you know, you add also another component to these meditative exercises and their mantras. What exactly are mantras and how are they helpful? Well, mantra is a vocalization using a sound to heal yourself or enhance your mental development, your, your spiritual development. Uh, so it's another Eastern tradition and uh, using chanting is something that's really, I'm, I'm a little bit new to. I never had much of a breathing practice or any mantra practice. And yet the main tradition that I come from, the man used the standing meditation and posture holding. He said, you must use vocalization to reach certain uh, parts of the body for congenital reasons. And so that always intrigued me, but no one could explain to me uh, what they were doing or why and how they figured out what to do or what to. And so as I explored different traditions, I found that some mantras I really appreciated And I found immediately it provided like a go-between between between like meditation where you're mentally very still and active exercise, like moving Tai Chi form. So it's kind of in between and you're exercising your body through your diaphragm, your vocalization, the different vocalizations affect the different organs. So if I wanted to do something with my uh, my lungs say, then one, one word, there's several different, you know, healing sounds, but, uh, the Airme tradition I've been investigating uses a shong. Shong uh-huh. means uh, it doesn't have a meaning that I'm aware of. Uh, it's just the A-N-G, mostly the okay. A-N sound. It's and the vibration of the it. sound itself, yes. like the vibrated frequency. You say shong. You put your hand on your lung. You say shong, shong, oh. shong, and you feel a strong vibration. Mm-hmm. Shong. You put it in the middle, you don't feel it. Shong, shong, shong. You feel it in the lung. Shong. You do something for the spleen and stomach. You say gom gua. Right away, you notice your stomach really moves. Gom gua, gom gua, gom gua. And the left side vibrates, which is where your stomach is. (laughs) It does. Yeah. Gom gua. Yeah. Yeah. And then you put it on the hand by the liver, which is mostly on the right. And you say, Uh Wah, and you vibrate it. Wah. So there's That's several. So weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if you do this for an hour, your whole body will feel, you know, vibrating, kind of uh, lightening <laughs> I'm up. I'm going to go home and for an hour, gua. <laughs> so I've tried to do it. There's a way to access the top of your head so that you, you can help yourself with your spiritual development. Uh-huh. There's a way to do it for all parts of your body. So I combine those with the elements. So like the earth element, the spleen and stomach, and then we uh-huh. use the gong gua. And for the liver and gallbladder, the palm goes up, right? And we can say gua, and it'll break people oh, out of okay. their problem. So now you're doing the, now, now you're doing now. The, the mudra and the movement and the mantra. Yes. And so these are, um, are these in any particular language? Or you said it didn't really mean a certain word so it's just some of them do and some some of them have no actual meaning even in their native tongue and others do 
And so some people worry about I'm saying something I in another language I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm asking. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think that everyone wants to know what they're saying, especially <laughs> if it sounds like another language. Like, what did you mean? Yeah. I don't word? see any side, negative <laughs> side effects to doing it as far as your own health, uh, as far as insulting someone else or something. I, I can't speak to that. But you look at how you are now the liver a little bit stuck, the gallbladder. Mm-hmm. Yep. You put the hand like palm up, you go forward. Ah, it doesn't want to move. So you go forward a certain point. What well, you feel the locking in your back. Uh-huh. You feel some, then you say, Wah. Wah. goes right through. <laughs> so it's another shortcut. All of these things are like shortcuts. And eventually you're able to uh, create like a, like a tool chest that you can keep yourself going. I mean, most people will brush their teeth, but what do they do for the rest of themselves? And if they got engaged with this, after a while, they'd feel like, I don't feel like I can leave the house until I've done my standing meditation or my meditative exercise because, you know, it just doesn't feel right. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh. What's one for the pancreas? Just the pancreas is, uh, goes with the earth element. So when the Chinese say spleen, they mean pancreas as well. Right. So it's the gong gua and it's the palm down, the earth, uh, abiding with the earth, according with the earth. And, and that gets T11, it gets in your back at certain levels, it gets the organ, gets into the center of the sphenoid. You'll hear me lecture next weekend about it. If you go to oh, the cool. Academy virtual website right. lectures, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I would like to see that. And these are things that you teach on your online courses, in your online courses, right? Yes, really, I've uh, not gone to online since the pandemic started. And I'm trying to develop a program like Teachable, like the website. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with that. It really is a way to encapsulate your teaching very well. So I'm trying to use a a new format and put it all like that. I I think that would be so helpful. So if anyone anyone wants, you do have a booklet. So if anyone wants to. Video too. Because most people watching are not in Lancaster. So how can they work with you? How can they learn more about meditative exercises? Well, we're starting to have our online programming really come to the to the fore, and uh, we have you know uh, the video, we have the booklet. Right now, that's pretty much what we have. But uh, you know, we have classes locally, and I'm just about to go and develop this into some kind of business online. At least I hope to. Okay, so if we'd like to keep in touch with you, how can we do that? Well, just go to Lassiter Osteopathic. That's L-A-S-E-T-E-R, osteopathic. And uh, I'm going to, should I spell osteopathic? Does everyone know that word? It, no. I think it'll be, it's on the banner. Oh, good. So go to lasterosteopathic.com and you can find everything there. This has been so helpful. I I'm, I'm really want to teach my kids like some of the mudras and the mantras. I think it's just like a really fun way um, to incorporate meditation this is a kind of meditation this is i mean i don't think people realize that um and it's so accessible and yet really powerful in terms of healing um calming and balancing mind body and spirit so thank you so much chris oh, you're for most being welcome. here so we're this is we're talking dr chris lassiter he's an osteopath un- acupuncturist and internal healing arts expert with meditative exercises thank you so much for joining me i'm dr arlene diamco host of the Me- multi-dimensional md in a couple of weeks we're going to be with my guest jill sylvester talking about how to access your intuition to help you heal and don't forget to tune in for in the burb show every other wednesday at 4 p.m est where host amy lyle and Gina Riles are sharing their experiences with you on this show. Thank you so much. I love all of you. Please take care of yourselves so you can take uh, just experience more love and happiness in the world. And you can also go out and help shift and transform the world. Thanks for being with us. Wow, what a show. I feel great already. Don't you all look at health in a whole new light now? If you do, please don't forget to like, comment, and share the show. And you can also watch all of Dr. Arlene's shows on uimediaapp.com. Catch her live every other Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern 
on WDJY 99.1 FM in Atlanta, Facebook Live, Spreaker, and almost all the podcasting platforms at UI Media Network. You can also write to her at contact at uimedianetwork.org with your questions, concerns, and comments. Like Hippocrates says, everyone has a doctor in him or her. We just have to help it in its work. And Dr. Arlene is here to do just that. The United Intentions Foundation and its associates take no responsibility for the opinions and statements made by the talk show hosts or their guests.